Hey YouTube, this is Alexander and I'm back with another tech video. Uh, this is a little bit of a different tech video. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is comparing the Nexus S running CM10.1 uh, aka uh, Android 4.2.1 to the Nexus 4 running Android 4.2.1 stock. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is a boot test. So we press them at the same time. If you're wondering why I'm doing this comparison, uh, I got a I got a comment from a subscriber uh, to do a comparison video about these two. This guy running uh, this, almost the same version as this with some slight modifications, but it's got ho older hardware. Um, and I thought it was interesting. I th I kind of like the idea, so I I went ahead and started a, a video about it or filmed a video about it rather. So you can see this guy, uh, the Nexus 4, booted up a lot faster, of course, that's a given. It's got a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core um, Snapdragon S4 Pro CPU, it's a ton, huge name. Uh, and over here we just have a 1 gigahertz um, single-core uh, hummingbird processor by Samsung. So this guy is LG and this guy is Samsung. So I just want to try and make this brief um, comparing basically old hardware with similar OS to the new hardware with similar OS. So the Nexus S, um, I think it's still a pretty good device. Um, to be honest, if I didn't get this guy or if I didn't upgrade, uh, of course this would still be my daily driver, but because I did upgrade because I missed out on the Galaxy Nexus, so I decided to go ahead and get the Nexus 4. Uh, I really do like it, but this guy's still, uh, it's still a great device, I would say, and, uh, especially with the developer community backing it. Um, it's, I, I, would, I can't complain too much if, if I didn't have this guy. I was, I was fine with this guy. Um, I upgraded though, of course, to have the latest and greatest. Um, so what we have here is uh, we got the app drawers just comparing the different looks. Um, now I'll talk a little bit about the hiccups or lags. Uh, on the uh, Nexus S, since I don't use it as my daily driver, I can't accurately say uh, how many lags or hiccups it's have had but I do know that it does have them and I would like to say that it's not as bad as the Nexus 4 to be honest sometimes I do get lags and hiccups on my Nexus 4 um, mostly lags um, and uh, what happens is for example if I'm in the uh, Chrome browser or if I'm in uh, an app or maybe um, YouTube I know it happens a lot for me in the YouTube app uh, I'll press the back button and pressing the back button, you can see it kind of glows up there. It just hangs. It, uh, my, f I let my finger go, and it's uh, glowing, and it doesn't exit. It hangs for a couple seconds, and I gotta press the home button. I gotta, uh, you know, lock it and then unlock it. And sometimes it just gets annoying. Um, it doesn't happen a lot, and as you can see, I don't have a lot of apps running. And I realize it might be, you know, a rogue app, but I'm pretty. Uh, diligent about checking uh, reviews and, and ratings and stuff before I download apps so I don't really think it's that um, might be the processor it also might just be the uh, YouTube app I mean maybe it's uh, not fully optimized yet but over here we do get lags too of course because this uh, is a lot older processors 1 gigahertz single core um, 512 megabytes of RAM so and there's about 200 available for me to use uh, so it will experience the occasional lag now is the lag bad to where you wouldn't want to use this as a daily driver? I'd say no. Um, I used it as a daily driver for almost two years and I never had uh, any issues severe enough for me to complain enough to not want to use it anymore. Um, I think it's still a nice device if you aren't looking to upgrade or you can't or for some reason you there's no way you'd upgrade. Um, I'd say the Nexus S is still, is still a good device especially running you know custom ROMs. Um, that's the next thing we'll take a look at is custom ROM differences. Uh, here we're running 4.2. I'll go ahead and show you guys. Uh, we have 4.2.1 over here on the Nexus 4. Sorry about the quality. This is my, my iPod Touch recording. Um, and over here on the Nexus S, we have Android version 4.2.1. Uh, same as this with some slight modifications. And we have uh, Signage and Mod 10.1. The nightly build is January 3rd, uh, 2013. So that's just a little bit of background for these. Uh, this is able to be overclocked. Uh, the maximum overclocking speed is going to be 1.4 uh, gigahertz. But I noticed even at 1.2 I get random reboots, so I always just leave it at 1, 1 gigahertz. Plus, 
I don't use it as a daily driver, so it's fine for me. Um, now uh, the settings, um, settings we go, sorry, back into settings and if we take a look at the launcher uh, or at the interface we do have an interface menu right here uh, that we don't get on stock Android so that's always nice with custom ROMs uh, we can go ahead and uh, tweak, uh, tweak the launcher we can mess around with the lock screen, make different shortcuts so that we can uh, have, whoops, we can add Google Now back to the shortcut or add our camera as you can see with 4.2 it's gone you can go ahead and put those back if you want or you can just make a quick shortcut to get to, uh, for example, maybe Facebook or Google Plus or something like that. Uh, you have system, so you can play around with this, uh, the status bar, and the uh, notification toggles. Now these are actual toggles, and most ROMs are actual toggles. Over here on stock Android, they are, um, all they are is uh, like shortcuts, like airplane mode, that's a toggle, but um, brightness, that's sort of a toggle. Um, it's the same, same over here. Um, Wi-Fi though, this is a shortcut, so you can see that takes me there, and over here, that turns it off. So, little differences like that, but I'll show you here, airplane mode, that's an actual toggle over here, so now I toggled airplane mode. So it's kind of weird over here, and over here on custom ROMs, it's fully, um, everything that can be a toggle is a toggle, which I like. I wish uh, Google would have made it that way. Everything else in the settings is pretty much the same. You have advanced over here, this kind of varies with ROMs though. Uh, color hack presets, put back to natural, let's what I like it at. Um, backlight dimming for this guy. This you don't really have backlight dimming because it's got the on-screen buttons. Um, so that's gonna pretty much wrap it up. Cameras are almost uh, cameras are gonna be the same since that's a hardware dependency. Um, what what I do want to do though is uh, go into Quadrant Standard and just run a benchmark um, just to so you guys can see how how it runs. Um, we'll go ahead and do that and we'll run full benchmark. So um, this video came about because of a subscriber's um, input. So if you guys want to see something, um, a, another comparison possibly, or maybe in depth about each one, um, I already do reviews about CM10.1 for the Nexus S. So uh, this guy, I am uh, uh, probably going to be rooting it, but that's not until Google stops um, support for it. So unfortunately, if you're looking for a root video or you know reviews of all uh, of ROMs on the Nexus 4 from me. Uh, just stay subscribed because for sure they will come, but um, just not yet. Uh, I'm still it's still getting support from Google, and uh, the phone is fast enough. I don't mind the missing out on the extra features that ROMs bring, so that's fine for me. Um, the Nexus S, like I said, I already do videos. And as you can see, this guy finished. Hopefully, this doesn't take too long because uh, T-Mobile went ahead and throttled me because I went over five gigs. Um, okay, that didn't take too long, and my device scored a uh, 4,833. I know you can't see that, but it's 4833. Um, it's the one on the top right here. Now, I know there are devices like uh, the One X Plus or the Droid DNA. Uh, I think the Droid DNA does, but you know those devices get uh, the Galaxy S3. I think. They get like scores in the six to seven thousands, or maybe five is lower. Um, but they get really high scores past um, the Nexus 4. I don't know if that's because Quadrant Standard isn't, uh, you know, uh, fully optimized for the Nexus 4, the hardware or the software. But that's um, that's sort of how that scoring goes. Now over here, I think I'm going to go ahead and speed this up because it's taking really long, and this video is getting long. I don't want to get it too long. Alright, so it's done now. That took about maybe a minute and a half or so. Um, okay, so um, just in case you weren't prepared, this is going to score a really low score. Uh, my device, it got a 1274, so 1274 compared to the 4833. A uh, big difference. Yeah, it's kind of weird because every time I run this on here, I know you might not be able to see it, but it's got the, the second slot right here is the Nexus S. And then it says your device, which also is a Nexus S. So, and it did that even before I was rooted. So, I don't know what that's about. But um, there's uh, your Quadrant standard for you. Um, now, obviously, no speed test because that's relying on more so the uh, network. Um, so that was my comparison video. Sorry, it was a little longer. Uh, it was longer than I intended. But um, if you want to see anything like this uh, again, hopefully I can try and get a new device. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, sorry it was a little long, 
But if you want to see anything like this in the future, just go ahead and let me know. I know I don't have a lot of devices, but maybe more uh, in-depth or something like that. Uh, thanks for watching. Go ahead and subscribe uh, down there. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions or you have a question or anything like that. And for a uh, review on CM10.1, you can just go ahead and click right here on my Nexus S. Go ahead and just right here, click that, and uh, it'll take you there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.